Hey guys, it's me, Crystal, and today I'm gonna show you how to make some two color reversible macrame bracelets. I'll show you how to make two different versions of this bracelet. The three on the left are made with satin rat tail nylon cord, and then those two on the right are made with, with cotton yarn. The ones with the satin cord will require a lighter to burn the ends and melt it down, so if you are a kid making this, be sure to have an adult handy to help you out with that part. All right, to start, you're gonna need two center cord pieces that are 18 inches long. And then you're also gonna need two outer pieces that are 34 inches long. And I'm using one of each color. If you want that two color effect, you'll need a different color working cord on each side. I'm taping my center cords down to my work surface here. And I also wanted to mention that I'm using two different color center cords just because I thought it was fun. You don't have to, they can be the same color, that's fine. So just tape them down and then I tape them down a little bit more and you're gonna grab your two working cords and you're gonna hold them so that they're even, the ends are matched up there and you can actually melt these together but I haven't had much luck with that. So I'm showing you the way I did it instead. So you're just gonna lay them next to your center cords and then I'm taping mine in place and you're gonna leave a little bit of cord sticking up because we're going to need to melt the ends once we get our bracelet finished. So I'm just taping them like that and I have a ridiculous amount of tape here. But now we're gonna tie square knots and you're gonna take your left working cord and make this L shape and then bring the right working cord over where it's crossed over right there. And then you're gonna bring the right cord underneath the center cords and then through the loop over on the left and pull it through and then just pull the two working cords to tighten it and don't pull them too tight because we're just taped down there and they'll just come untaped if you pull too hard. And then you're gonna take the right cord and make a reverse L over the center cords. Bring the left cord over the crossed over cord like that. And then you're gonna bring it under the middle cords and through the loop over on the right. So it's the same thing, just in reverse and pull it through and then tighten it and this time you can tighten it a little bit um, more firmly and you just want to make sure you pull all your knots about the same tightness so they're about the same size and then you just repeat and you're going to continue tying your square knots like this and for this size cord i found that for an adult size bracelet you'll want to tie about 25 square knots. And for um, a smaller size one, you just measure the size of the person's wrist that you want to make a bracelet for, and then just tie knots until it is that length. And it's that simple to customize it. So just continue, and here we go. I got my 25 knots tied. This is how it looks at this point. And we're gonna go ahead and untape it. And here I'm showing you how the reversible, how it looks different on the front and the back, which is pretty cool. And now what we're gonna do, you see it's kind of loose at the top where I untaped it, so just pull it. And the satin cord does kind of want to come undone on you if you don't be careful. And that's why you have to melt the ends. And now we're gonna pull the center cords a little bit to make it so it's even. You want an even amount of cord sticking out on either side. So you can just kind of scoot your square knots down and kind of inchworm it down until there's an equal amount of cord hanging out. And now we're going to pull the ends of the working cords really tight. And this is the part that you will need a lighter for. Like I said, if you are a child, please have an adult help you with this. And if you're an adult, just please be very, very careful because you could burn yourself. And if you scroll to nine minute and 52 mark of this video, there is a fire free version of this using cotton yarn. But just go ahead and cut the cord and you're gonna leave just like a quarter inch and then grab your lighter and very, very carefully melt just the very end of that cord. And then I use the side of my lighter to mush it down and this will keep it from coming undone. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And be careful to keep your center cords out of the way because we're gonna need those in a minute. And you just trim it down, leaving just a little piece and then carefully, carefully melt it down and then 
smush it and it will stay in place like that. And then you're just gonna do the same thing with the other two working cords on the other end, right over here. All right, so now we got our ends trimmed off and melted down, and now we gotta make our sliding closure. First, we're gonna knot the ends here, and you have a couple options. For this bracelet that I made, I just held both um, pieces of cord together and tied an overhand knot on each side, and that looks good, and that's what I usually do. But since I used two different colors of cord, I thought it would be kind of fun to just tie a knot in each end and have the loose ends hanging. I don't know, I just thought it was kind of a different look. So it's up to you. You can either hold your center cords together and knot them or do them like I'm doing here. If you do this the way I'm doing it with two knots on each side, you'll just wanna make sure that they're about the same distance away from the end so they line up pretty well. And then just pull them nice and tight and repeat that on the other side. So here's how it looks at this point. And now we're just gonna cut off the ends there, and now we're gonna make our sliding loop closure. So what you're gonna do is overlap the hanging ends of your cord together like this. Then you're gonna grab your 14 inch long piece of your cord and hold it behind where your, the crossed over cords are and make sure you have an even amount on each side. And just to make this easier to show, I'm gonna tape it down to my desk so it's not flopping all over the place, but you see it's, it's, it's curled around like that and it's overlapped. And then you have your 14 inch piece of cord here. So now I'm just gonna also tape it down to keep it even while I'm filming. And you're gonna tie three square knots. So just like we did before, you make that L shape, bring the right cord over, then bring it under and through. and then tighten it up and then i'm getting my little piece of tape out of the way so i can tighten this knot all the way and then just pull it really good and tight and continue until you have so that's a half of a square knot and then you tie the other half of this first square knot and then you're going to do that two more times so you have three square knots all together Okay, so here we go. We got our three square knots tied. And now, just like before, we're gonna trim the ends and use the lighter to carefully melt that little end down and mush it with the side of the lighter a little bit. And then just do the same thing on the other side. And then that bracelet is finished. And all you have to do is just pull and that convenient sliding knot closure will just make the bracelet open up and you can put it on really easily. And you can also tighten it really easily, even with yourself doing it. You don't have to have someone else help you put it on, which is always nice. And it stays nice and secure. And I left these um, cords kind of long just because I liked how it looked, but you can make them shorter if you want. You can really adjust it however you like. And it is super simple to take off again whenever you want to. And that's just like super convenient. And you'll see that if you just flip it over, you get a different effect with the colors. Here's another one I made and you see it's got totally different colors and um, you can really have fun matching up different colors with this. And also if you wanna make this smaller for like a kid or someone, um, you could just reduce the amount of square knots that you do and it will be smaller and this will fit an adult size wrist. And that is that one. And now I'm gonna show you how to make the no fire necessary cotton version. 
And for this, I'm just using this bulky cotton yarn and this kind of looks like macrame cord, but it's actually not. It's just bulky cotton yarn. Um, it's a lot softer than macrame cord. If you squish it down, it like completely flattens. And I'm also using for the middle, I'm using this recycled big cotton that's like a braided cotton yarn. Well, it's part cotton, it's also polyester. You could just use another piece of bulky cotton yarn for this part, and I'm just using this because it's what I had, and I wanted white, and I didn't have any white bulky yarn. So I'm cutting my 18 inch long center piece, and then I have my two 40 inch long bulky pieces of cotton yarn here, and I'm just holding them next to the center piece, and I'm leaving a little bit longer of a tail because I'm going to have to sew them in in a minute and just taping them down. And then this part is exactly the same. You're just gonna tie your square knot. You bring that left part over in an L shape, put the right side down over that. Then you go up underneath and through the loop over on the left. Then just tighten it up and be careful not to pull too tight for this first one since it's just taped in place. We don't want to untape it on accident. And then you're going to do the same thing on the right side. You make the reverse L shape and then take your left cord, bring it over that crossed over cord. Then you bring the end up through the middle and through that loop or under the middle and through the loop and pull it and then you're just going to pull it to tighten it up. There you go. And I had to notice when I was using the cotton yarn instead of the rat tail cord that you want to be careful when you tighten. You want to make sure you're pulling them the same uh, tightness each knot or you'll end up having some that are smaller than others. And that seemed to be more a problem with the cotton yarn, but it really wasn't a problem. You just need to be aware of it. So just continue tying your knots. If you're using this bulky yarn, you're gonna make still the same amount, still 25. And if you're making an adult sized bracelet, I find that six inches worth of knots is about the right length. So just continue tying knots until you have a six inch long bracelet or however long you need it to be for your recipient. And here we go. I finished all my knots. And you see you got the cool reverse effect again. And now I'll show you how to deal with the ends here since we obviously can't melt cotton yarn. It would just catch on fire. Uh, what instead what we're gonna do is weave them in. And first we have to go ahead and even up our center cords like we did before. See, they're not even right now. So you're just gonna pull the knots um, down and just kind of scoot them on the center cord. The center cord's in the middle and it's not knotted in. It just can be slid down a little bit. So do that until they are even. And I'm not quite there yet, but I'm gonna keep sliding them until it is nice and even. And then once you get it, um, so the center cords are even, and then you wanna make sure that you stretch your knots back out and don't like have them all bunched up. And I usually measure and see that it's the length that I was going for just to be sure that I stretched them out enough. And here we go, they're six inches again. So we are ready to move on. And for this, we're using a blunt tipped large eye needle, and I'm just threading one of the working cords on to the needle. And what we're gonna do is flip it over so you have the center part is the same color as the cord you're weaving in. And you're going to just weave it up under a few of the knots. And this kind of takes a little effort. You might wanna get a pair of pliers to help you pull the needle through. I couldn't find mine, so I was just having to do my best with my hands, <laughs> which as you can see was a bit of a struggle. But once you get it pulled through, I just go under like three or four knots and then you can just cut the excess cord and do the same thing with the other ones. So here we go, I got it through a few knots and now I'm just gonna cut the excess right close to the knot. And just be careful you don't accidentally cut any of your knots, that wouldn't be good. And then I'm doing the same thing with the pink yarn on the other side. So just repeat that and 
cut the excess and then do the same thing on the other side. And this is what it will look like at this point. So now we have that all nice and neat. We just got to fix our ends. And I was going to show you, you could even just tie this just with a knot at this point if you don't want to mess with the sliding loop. That's just another option, but I'm going to show you how to do the sliding loop anyways. Grab your 18 inch piece of yarn and we're just again going to cross the center cords together like this and I'm going to tape it down just to make it easier to see. And grab your piece of cord and thread it underneath those crossed over cords. Make sure there's an equal amount on each side and then you're going to tie three square knots again. So bring that cord over the left, bring the right cord down over it and then go up underneath and through the loop on the left and tighten it up just like we did before. So that's your first half of your first square knot and then you're going to tie the second half again. So bring the right piece over in the reverse L shape, bring the left cord down over that one and then up underneath the center cords and through the loop on the right. And pull the ends to tighten. And there's your first square knot. You're just going to repeat that two more times. So you have three all together. All right, there we go. And now we just have to untape it and figure out what to do with these ends. Just to be safe with this part, I did use some glue and I just, I'm using this advanced craft glue. I recommend a different kind and I'll link it down in the description. But we're just going to put a little bit right here in these little corners here. And you want to make sure you don't accidentally glue it to the center cord because we want this knot to be able to slide so we can adjust our bracelet. But I'm just adding a little bit of glue there right in that corner. Like I said, I don't really recommend this glue just because it was real messy and kind of smelly, but I have another one I will link down in the description. And again, we're going to thread our end, one of our ends onto our needle. And we're going to, instead of going down through the center, like we did before, we're going to sew it around the edge. Because if we go down the center, it's going to end up coming out when you slide it, I think. So I have a different solution. We're just going to kind of whip stitch sort of around the edge. I'll show you what I mean. You see you have, if you look at the side, you have these little like brick, uh, <laughs> loops. I don't know how, like, like in a brick pattern kind of. So we're going to go under this one right, or we're going to go through this one right here, right next to where we're coming out already. So you just insert your needle in there and right through the loop and then pull your yarn through and tighten it. And you'll see it pretty much just disappears. You don't even really see it once you get it pulled through. And then you're going to go to the next one. So we just came out of this one here and we're going to go in the one right next to it. We're going to stick the needle right in this little crevice and go through that loop and pull it through again. And then we're going to just do that again. And we're going to do that down each loop on the side of our little sliding knot thingy. There we go. And then the last one is just going to be right here on the end, the loop that is furthest over on the end. Just go right under that. And pull it through. And then we're just going to cut this end of the yarn and do the same thing on the other side. And this will keep your end from coming out when you slide it, but still have it nice and secure in there. So I think this is a good solution. So far, so good. And there we go. And you see it looks nice and neat. And just do the same thing on the other side. I did exactly the same thing and now I'm cutting the yarn over here. And now you have your nice sliding knot closure. And it's with a cotton bracelet, which I thought that was pretty cool. Now we just have to take our ends and do our overhand knot 
to finish those off, just like we did before, and just figure out how long you want it to be and where you want your knot to be. It's really kind of up to you. Just want to make sure you leave enough slack to make it easy to take it on and off. And once you get the knots tied, you can just trim that excess little bit of yarn sticking out there on the end so it looks nice and neat. And then this bracelet is also complete. And I think this turned out really good. I was really excited about this because I didn't know if I'd be able to do that sliding knot with the cotton, but I think it worked really, really well. And I see it's just as easy to put on and off and you can flip it over and get the cool different effect with the knot pattern there. I think that's pretty fun. And this bracelet with the bulky yarn ended up being the pretty much the exact same size as the one with the two millimeter rat tail cord, just for size reference. It ended up being the same thickness and the same um, size all the way around. I also made another version of this with just worsted weight cotton yarn. I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. Here I'm showing you they're exactly about the same size. Um, so that is for size reference, in case you were wondering. But here, I'm just gonna quickly show you, I'm not gonna slowly do this one since we've kind of gone over it already, but I'm just using this cotton yarn. This is regular old worsted weight cotton yarn like you buy at Walmart. And I'm doing the same thing. The only difference is my working cords are 40 inches long this time instead of 34 inches. But my two center cords are still 18 inches long and I'm tying way more square knots, but I just tied knots until it was six inches long. So here we go. At this point, you're just gonna go ahead and weave in the working cord ends just like we did before. And then do your sliding knot closure the same way. But my sliding knot, I used an 18 inch piece of cord and I tied four square knots instead of three since it was smaller and I didn't want it to be too small of a knot. And once you get that done, you just do the exact same thing. You glue a little bit and then you weave the end back and forth on the side of the sliding knot closure. Then you'll just cut off the excess yarn just like you did before and then tie an overhand knot in your center cords towards the end, making sure they're about the same length. You just cut off that excess cord at the ends and then it is complete. So you can still do this even with just worsted weight cotton yarn, which is really easy to get. And it is just as adjustable. It is a little bit skinnier of a bracelet, but I think it would look really cute if you made several of these and wore them together in different colors. I think that would be really fun. And you see it's just as easy to put on and take off as the larger ones. And it's still got that cool two color reversible thing going on, which I think is pretty neat. Here's another one I made with light blue and white. And I thought that was really pretty. And I think they look really nice together. And these are really comfortable too. I really like the cotton um, bracelets. So that's an option. And then we have our shiny satin ones here. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please leave a like, comment, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching.